as well as those of you that are joining us online. Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Well, folks, we have a big week ahead of us this coming week, and um, our new minister, uh, Noe Juarez, he and his family will be returning uh, to the states from Peru this week, early in the week, and they will be heading to Greensboro, which is where Laurie is from, and their plans are for the family to join us here in Goldsboro next Friday. So he will be with us next Sunday, and I hope everyone will make a special effort and maybe not enjoy the beach sunshine next weekend, but enjoy some of that time in Goldsboro with us. Uh, we really, really are looking forward to this, and this is definitely an exciting time in the life of this church. But first, to kick off the week, I want to welcome Kathy Mooney, who agreed to join us this morning. Uh, Kathy is um, the minister at Unity Presbyterian Church in Newton Grove, as well as co-moderator of our Presbytery's uh, Commission on Ministry. And on a personal note, she was the advocate for our PNC. and She uh, helped me personally through some, some of those times that were not the best during the PNC effort, and I was, I'm very grateful to her, and I really appreciate all that you did to, to help us. Um, another note, uh, you'll notice, well, no, Mary's not in here. Uh, uh, oh, she's here. Mary is here. Uh, if any of you are not aware, the flights for the mission team were canceled last minute. And so the mission trip has been postponed this year. And uh, we'll see what Sam Hunter can come up with for a later date. <laughs> so, uh, but we're grateful that they're here and safe and didn't get halfway down there and have to take a Uber back. Another note, uh, Vacation Bible School is going to be July 25th through the 29th. It'll be from 9 a.m. to noon each of those days. We're still in need of some volunteers, so if you think you have some time that you could help out with that, please contact Mary. We continue to have our thoughts and our prayers with Jimmy and his family as this past Tuesday we celebrated the life and the witness of Louise Huffman. Please remember him. Also, please keep Joyce Pate and her family in your, life, in your prayers uh, as her brother, Don Casey, died. Now, let us worship the Lord. The opening scripture sentences come from Psalm 107. Verse 1, 8, and 9. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty, and the hungry he fills with good things. Please pray with me. Almighty God, our God and our protector, as we gather today in your holy house, open our minds and souls and hearts that we may be inclined to hear the gentle direction of your spirit in our lives. Help us follow you as you lead us to the places you have called us to go as your head, your hands, and your heart in your world. Amen. Grace and peace to you all and greetings from New Hope Presbytery. It is wonderful to be here with you. And I'm going to do what I can to turn around and talk to y'all, but I'm not used to that. In my little bitty teeny weeny sanctuary, there are some wings over here and some wings over here. So I'm used to doing that, but turning all the way around and I'm on a step. 
And I'll just tell you something about me. I'm 60 years old. I know I don't look it. Uh, I have to convince them at the Harris Teeter when I shop on Thursdays that, no, really, I get the senior discount. But the older I get, the more, and I'm afraid of heights. And so even the step stool in the kitchen uh, gives me pause. But uh, I will do the best that I can up here. Uh, and I think there's plenty for me to hold on to just in case. It is a privilege to be here with you today, and I'll ask that you bear with me uh, because I don't know your order of worship, and I know the one that I'm so familiar with. So if I mess up, just, just go, no big deal. That's what those country preachers do, and I'll try to do what I can to get back on track. I want to begin our scripture reading with a reading from Psalm 8. I will be reading from the Common English Bible. That has been become a favorite of mine. It's a relatively new translation at this point. I'm going to say probably 15 years or more. But it is translated from the original language by scholars who are preaching and teaching right now. They're names that are contemporaries of us all. And uh, it is a very accurate translation. And I just love the way that we can hear it in the language that we actually use. So listen for God's word. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. You made your glory higher than heaven from the mouths of nursing babies. You have laid a strong foundation because of your foes in order to stop vengeful enemies. When I look up at your skies, at what your fingers made, the moon and the stars that you set firmly in place, what are human beings that you think about them? What are human beings that you pay attention to them? You have made them only slightly less than divine, crowning them with glory and grandeur. You've let them rule over your handiwork, putting everything under their feet, all sheep and all cattle, the wild animals too, the birds in the sky, the fish of the ocean, everything that travels the pathways of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name throughout the earth. And our Old Testament reading comes from Joshua chapter 3. Listen for God's story. Joshua took down the camp early in the morning. He and all the Israelites marched out of Shittim and came to the Jordan where they stayed overnight before crossing. At the end of three days, the officers went through the middle of the camp. They commanded the people, as soon as you see the Lord your God's chest containing the covenant and the Levitical priest carrying it, You are to march out from your places and follow it. But let there be some distance between you and it, about 3,000 feet. Don't come near it. You will know the way you should go, even though you've never traveled this way before. I want to say that again. You will know the way that you should go, even though you've never traveled traveled this way before. Joshua said to the people, make yourselves holy. Tomorrow the Lord will do wonderful things among you. Then Joshua said to the priest, lift up the covenant chest, go along in front of the people. So they lifted up the covenant chest and went in front of the people. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to make you great in the opinion of all Israel. 
Then they will know that I will be with you in the same way that I was with Moses. You are to command the priest to carry the covenant chest. As soon as you come to the bank of the Jordan, stand still in the Jordan. Joshua said to the Israelites, come close. Listen to the words of the Lord your God. Then Joshua said, this is how you will know that the living God is among you and will completely remove the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Gergesites, Amorites, and Jebusites before you. Look, the covenant chest of the ruler of the entire earth is going to cross over in front of you in the Jordan. Now pick 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one per tribe. The soles of the priest's feet who are carrying the chest of the Lord, ruler of the whole earth, will come to rest in the water of the Jordan. At that moment, the water of the Jordan will be cut off the water flowing downstream will stand still in a single heap. The people marched out from their tents to cross over the Jordan. The priests carrying the covenant chest were in front of the people. When the priests who were carrying the chest came to the Jordan, their feet touched the edge of the water. The Jordan had overflowed its banks completely the way it does during the entire harvest season. But at that moment, the water of the Jordan coming downstream stood still. It rose up as a single heap very far off, just below Adam, which is the city next to Zarethan. The water going down to the desert sea, that is the Dead Sea, was cut off completely the people crossed opposite Jericho. So the priest carrying the Lord's covenant chest stood firmly on dry land in the middle of the Jordan. Meanwhile, all Israel crossed over on dry land until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. The word of God for the people of God. It's like it's a rug, okay? What kind of rug do you think it is? Well, you know, that's a good guess, but no, it's not a Father's Day rug. <laughs> i tell you what, it's got a bow on it. Why don't you unwrap it? But be careful because it kind of sheds. Your, whoever vacuums in here is going to love me this week. Can you put it down in front of the steps and tell me what it says? Do you have any idea what that word is? It says welcome. And I realized this morning that it says welcome in script. And I don't know that we teach script anymore, so it makes it a little harder to read, doesn't it? Well, why would we tell somebody welcome? Why would we say welcome? So somebody can come. And if you meet somebody new and they're coming in the door, we say, welcome, come on in. We're glad to have you. Do you know what's going to happen next Sunday here at this church? You're going to welcome a brand new minister. You get a new preacher. You get a new pastor. And I don't know what he's going to want to be called, but his official big name is Reverend Dr. Noe Warrens. That's a big name. I met him now a long time ago, and, and I called him Noe. But you may call him Pastor Noe or Pastor Juarez or Reverend Juarez. I don't know what he's going to want you to call him, but he'll tell you. And he has a beautiful wife named Laurie and two children 
who weren't born when I knew him, and they're teenagers now, right? <laughs> That's how long ago I knew him. But you know, we're supposed to welcome people. And so I brought that map to remind you that you need to be ready to welcome somebody new. Jesus taught us to welcome people. You know, he wandered around all over the place, and he ran into people that he'd never met before. Everywhere he went, there were people he'd never met before. And he always stopped and gave them time, and he listened to them, and he healed them. And we don't always have the gift of healing, but we can always listen, and we can always smile, and we can always say, I'm so glad I met you. And do you need something to eat? Do you need a glass of water? Would you like to take a walk? Whatever works for whatever time you meet them. We don't ever know, but when we welcome people, we do that joyfully. Do you know what that means? What does it mean to be joyful? That we're kind. That is a good word, yes, that we are kind because that's what we're supposed to be, isn't it? We're all brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, and we welcome one another. Have you ever seen a picture of Jesus where he's got his arms out like this? Okay. <laughs> and when you see Jesus with his arms wide open, that's a welcoming thing. And that's what y'all are going to do next week. Not just you, not just Mary. Not just Toby or the ladies in the choir, all the everybody here and all those people who are going to be here that aren't here this morning. You're going to open up your arms wide and you're going to welcome in a brand new family to your church. I understand you just did that with a few new families a couple of weeks ago. And this one's going to be really special because you're going to learn some things. From Reverend, from Reverend Noe, and probably from Laurie, too. Are you excited about that? Are y'all excited about that? I'm excited for you. Now, before we end our welcome time together, can we say a prayer? And I understand you know how to pray like I like to pray. Repeat after me. I say a line, and then you say a line. You know how to do that? But you're the only one up here won't marry. And she's young. But we want some help. Can we, you think we can get some help? Do you think the ladies over there will help us? You do? You think all these folks out here will help us? Okay. Let's all pray and ask God to help us be welcoming. Will you do that? Please bow your heads and pray with me. Dear God, thank you for welcoming us. Help us welcome others in your name. Help us welcome Reverend Juarez and his family. In big and bold ways. We love you. Amen. Thank you very much. Ladies, that was beautiful. Thank you very much. Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, focus our heads and our hearts on your voice this morning. Let us hear what you need us to hear in ways that set our feet in motion for you. Amen. Then Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. What a command. Only days before Moses had died, they were standing at the edge of the river trying to decide how to move the Ark of the Covenant to the other side. The spies had just returned from the city of Jericho and Joshua was beginning to get his plan under control. 
Now for over 25 years I was a Christian educator and I taught children and adults and I would teach Joshua too to both of those age groups. You know the story of Rahab, the harlot, who sacrificed her freedom and the safety of her family for strangers and for a faith that she really didn't understand. And then of course there's that story of the battle of Jericho Seven days of music and shouting until the city walls fall down under the stress. And then Joshua, through God, triumphs. Well, this verse, this chapter comes between those two stories. It has a lot to say. And this morning, I want us to really focus on get ready. Sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonderful things among you. The Hebrew word that's used here is kadash, and it means to consecrate, to sanctify, to prepare, to dedicate, to be hallowed, to be holy, to be sanctified, to be separate and set apart. Joshua is asking the people to get ready because it is about to happen. Forty years ago, they left slavery in Egypt for the promised land and now here they are. In the next week, a new wonder will begin here at First Presbyterian Church in Goldsboro. And in many ways, it may very well feel like you've been wandering around in the wilderness. You've had some excellent leadership, a strong session, a faithful PNC, interim pastors. You've had the prayers of this congregation and of New Hope Presbytery. And now, Everything is changing. God chose Joshua to be the leader of his people following the death of Moses. And your PNC, guided by faith and following the will of God, found Reverend Dr. Noe Juarez to bring new energy and life, to bring hope and direction and to help guide the faithful people at First Presbyterian Church in Goldsboro. Hopefully, Noe will be here prayerfully. Noe and his family will be here for many, many years, maybe 40. <laughs> but know this, wonderful things will happen, so get ready. Because God will do amazing things here. How do we get ready? What are we to do? How do we make that happen? Well, you've got to get your relationship with Almighty God. It's got to be the very first thing that you do. God must be first in your life. Don't we know that? That commandment, you know, how do I get into heaven? Jesus, what am I supposed to do? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your strength and your mind. And it's threaded throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's not new. It's been around. The Israelites knew it. Love God with all that you have. Make your relationship with Almighty God, with Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, your number one thing above everything else. And do things every day to strengthen that relationship. It's wonderful to go to Bible studies and to go to Sunday school and to do those kinds of things, but you need to find time every single day to strengthen that relationship with God. The more intimate you are with God, the better you will be able to hear and understand when God is asking you to do something. A personal relationship with God is fundamental.
for Christians. God gives us all the time that we need, right? So we need to give the same to God. All of our time should be given to God in one way or another, and a great deal of that time needs to be devoted to getting to know God on the deepest and most personal level because it is through prayer and reading of scripture and meditation that we learn to slow down and hear God speaking to us. And we want to, we need to hear God speaking to us. Joshua was telling his people to get ready because everything was about to change. They were finally leaving the wilderness and moving into the land that was flowing with milk and honey. It was time for something new and exciting. When a new pastor comes into a congregation, we know that things will change. And not unlike the Israelites who moved from the wilderness into the promised land, They knew that things would be different. But we are human, aren't we? And we get comfortable and set in our ways. We like our routines. And we don't want anything or anyone to mess that up. But a new leader will come in and change those routines. I anticipate that Reverend Juarez will bring great energy, new ideas, opportunities that you haven't even dreamed of yet, and a new vision for who you can be. It will be exciting, and at times, It may be overwhelming, so you're going to want to be ready. Consecrate your lives, purify them, ready them for the work that God has for you. Because God will do wonders right here. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Loving and faithful God, we thank you for fathers and grandfathers, for the mighty men of God that you have placed in our lives. We thank you for the blessings that you have showered into our lives, for we have loving families and friends comfortable homes, good jobs, plenty of food, so much more than we deserve, and we know that it all comes from you. Help us to be worthy of these blessings. Help us share with those who need. Help us love the way you have shown us to love so that we can be people of faith in everything that we do. We pray for your world. May leaders everywhere know your vision. Help them move from selfish platforms into places that reflect your love and graciousness. People everywhere are hurting. Help them feel your presence and know the comfort that comes only through your love. We pray for this faith community. Shake us up and motivate us to reach out, to love and share and do more than we ever imagined we could. Remind us that we are your image in the world and that our lives should reflect your love always. Be with Noe, Laurie, and their family as they make their way here to their new home in Goldsboro. 
Open our hearts to live into the message that they will bring from you. We pray for the PCUSA as we are gathered in General Assembly in Louisville, Kentucky and around the world. Bless the work that is being done in your name. We pray for those we love. Comfort and heal those who are sick and those who grieve. Lift up those who feel defeated. Light the paths of those who need to know that you are leading and that you are always present. And we pray from our hearts and ask you to hear our silent voices as we share with you those things that we dare not say out loud. Continue to pour out your grace and love and mercy through the church, the world, our lives, and the lives of those we love and cherish. We pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you all for your warm welcome. And I know that you will spend the next week or two finding ways to welcome Noe and his family to this, your church home, and into your community. What a blessing you have ahead of you. And what a blessing the Juarez family has as well. It surely works both ways. Now as you go this week, go in peace have courage, hold on to what is good, return to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering, honor all of God's beloved children, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, and may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and everyone that you love right now and always. Amen.